वेलकम बैक प्लेयर डॉक्टर्स एंड एनाटमी स्टूडेंट्स ओन विद डॉक्टर सैदा सारा इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ वीडियो आई विल टॉक अबाउट एन अदर कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ पेरिफिर नर्वस सिस्टम दैट इज स्पाइनल नर्व एंड आई नो मोस्ट ऑफ स्टूडेंट फील डिफिकल्टी वाइल दे आर गोइंग टू लीड दिस टॉपिक इन पेरिफिर नर्वस सिस्टम इन टू डेज लेक्चर आई विल कवर नॉट ओनली इट्स एनाटमी बट ऑल्सो कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू दैट टॉपिक सो लेट स्टार्ट Uh, we all know the peripheral nervous system consists of peripheral nerves and ganglia uh, so ganglia i have already covered in previous videos uh, hopefully you have uh, gone through all these topic and what the peripheral nerves are uh, these are all the nerves which are coming out from the central nervous system or i can also say these are all nerves which are coming out from brain and spinal cord uh, so nerves which are coming out from brain we name them as in cranial nerve as all of you know and the nerves which are coming from the spinal cord we name them as in spinal nerves so in this topic we are going to cover spinal nerve which are component of peripheral nervous system for moving to uh, this topic we should also have an idea that we also know that the each nerve fiber is an extension of neuron and the neuron is having two main uh, main parts which is cell body and axon the cell body of neuron are either in the central nervous system if it's in a central nervous system we name it as a nuclei already covered or if it's present in the peripheral nervous system we name it as an ganglia similarly the collection of axon uh, which are going to perform the similar function if it's in a central nervous system we name it tract but if the axons they are collected in the peripheral nervous system we name them as a nerves and the nerves can be cranial on the spinal nerve and again uh, we are covering that extension of neurons which are in the peripheral nervous system and these are spinal nerve as i told you the peripheral nervous system consists of peripheral nerves uh, which can be cranial or spinal uh, why we name them cranial or spinal uh, this is according to where they exit the central nervous system if they exit cranium or brain we name them cranial nerves uh, if they exit from spinal cord we name them spinal nerves so there are the 12 pair of cranial nerves and 31 pair of spinal nerves in our body so total 43 pair of peripheral nerves we are having in peripheral nervous system now i will start the story of spinal nerve i believe after having this background knowledge the story will be easy for you and uh, you will easily understand it so let's start uh, as we know there are the 31 pair of spinal nerves in our body among them eight are cervical uh, 12 thoracic five lumbar five sacral and one coccygeal uh, after this numbering i believe you will be thinking that there are the seven cervical vertebrae as shown in this image from c1 to c7 we number them but the spinal nerves are eight in number as already shown in previous images so how we number them the numbering of spinal nerve relates to vertebral column exit level or from what vertebral level they are coming out uh, so in this regard the rule of exit of spinal nerve is very important uh, this rule explain how we number the spinal nerve and why this numbering is important uh, this numbering is having great clinical significance please remember this it's important because if there is a compression at the level of intervertebral disc which spinal nerve will be involved uh, which part of body it's going to affect bring off cervical spinal nerve and the rest of spinal nerve is different uh, cervical spinal nerves are numbered according to vertebra located below uh, and the all rest spinal nerves are numbered according to vertebra situated above um, but how i know still it will be confusing for you but don't worry i look into coming uh, images and try to understand this here in this image uh, green blue purple and the red thread like structures are spinal nerves uh, which are cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and coccygeal respectively uh, so you have to focus first just on the cervical vertebrae uh, which you can see they are the seven in number and the cervical nerves which are eight in number so you can see we number the cervical spinal nerve according to vertebra located below for ex for example c1 spinal nerve is a nerve which is above c1 vertebra and the c2 spinal nerve will be nerve that is above c2 vertebra and so on uh, 
uh, as I told you, for the rest of spinal nerve, the rule is changed. And the rule is that that the spinal nerve, which are in thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and the coccygeal level, they are numbered according to vertebra situated above. For example, T1 spinal nerve will be nerve that is below T1. T2 spinal nerve we number as in this, and that is below T2, and so on. After coming to know all this, that the how many spinal nerves are there, how we number them, uh, now I will go into detail of spinal nerve anatomy. So if we take one spinal nerve and look into this, and we are going to uh, cover its anatomy, each spinal nerve consists of two roots, anterior or ventral root, which carries motor fiber, and the posterior or a dorsal root, which carries sensory fiber. It is also important to know that the cell body of these motor fiber or the anterior root, they are located in anterior horn of spinal cord. And the cell bodies of the sensory fibers, these are located in the archie uh, that we have already covered in ganglia as well. Uh, in this image, DRG is shown and you can see it contains the cell body of the sensory neurons. And now I will tell you another important point that is in the region of thoracic and upper lumbar region, not whole spinal cord. The anterior or the ventral root that was a motor root, it also carries the autonomic fiber. Uh, so it carries the autonomic fibers which are preganglionic sympathetic neurons. So the cell bodies of these preganglionic sympathetic neurons, they are located in the lateral horn of spinal cord. But please remember this, it's not at all level of spinal nerves. It is just at the level of thoracic and the upper lumbar regions. So in nutshell, anterior horn of spinal cord contains cell body of water neurons at all levels. DRG contains the cell body of sensory neurons at all levels and the lateral horn of spinal cord contains the cell bodies of the preganglionic sympathetic neurons just at thoracic and the upper lumbar regions. It is also important to remember that the dorsal and the ventral root or the sensory or the motor root and they are attached to the side of the spinal cord by little uh, rootlets. As you can see the spinal nerve in this image that is formed by the union of the dorsal and the ventral root as I already told you. And uh, you can also note that the dorsal and the ventral root are attached to the side of the spinal cord by means of the little rootlets. Uh, so anatomically it's important to know that where this union of dorsal and the ventral root take place, uh, what, uh, what that anatomical point it is. Uh, so this union and the formation of spinal nerve takes place within an intervertebral foramina. Uh, to understand the intervertebral foramina, it's necessary to understand the basic structure of vertebrae. So briefly, I will go through its structure. Here in this image, uh, L2 vertebra or the second vertebra uh, of the lumbar region is shown. Uh, and you can see this vertebra consists of body, lamina, process and the pedicles. Now we are not concerned with the other part, we are just concerned with that of pedicle. Uh, because it's important to understand the intervertebral foramina right now. So when we place these vertebrae over each other, an opening or the door is formed. Uh, and where this opening or door is formed, this is going to form between these two pedicles of the vertebra. So one pedicle of the above vertebra and the other pedicle of um, below vertebra. And we name this door as an intervertebral foramina or it is also named as neural foramina. Now why this door is over here or what's the function of uh, this intervertebral or neural foramina? Uh, so this foramina gives passage to spinal nerve which we are covering in this topic. It is also giving passage to the spinal blood vessels and it also houses the posterior root ganglia or DRG. Uh, so moving back to the story, uh, after the spinal nerve is formed within an intervertebral foramina, Please remember it carries the mixed fiber and these fiber can be sensory, motor or the autonomic fiber. Uh, but we already know that the autonomic fiber they are not present at all level of spinal cord. Uh, they are just present at the thoracic or the upper lumbar region of the spinal cord. Uh, so after the spinal nerve is formed, again it divides into two branches. It was also formed by means of two branches and after formation it is going to divide into two branches. Among these branches that the spinal nerve is giving off, one is smaller and the other is larger. 
So the smaller branch is going on the posterior side hence we are going to name it as in dorsal or the posterior ramus now while the larger branch of spinal nerve goes anteriorly so we name this branch as a ventral or anterior ramus it is also important to remember that the both ramus whether it's dorsal or ventral they carry mixed fibers suppose i am going to take ventral ramus it will be having sensory motor and in the region of the uh, lumbar and the upper thoracic segment it will be having uh, autonomic fiber as well similarly with that of other root uh, so what is the function of these dorsal and the ventral ramus why they are going to contain the mixed fibers uh, because they have to supply skin as well as the muscle of the body hence they are going to carry both the sensory and the motor fiber uh, what's happening with the posterior ramus after it was formed the posterior ramus travels backward and it supplies both the skin and the muscles of the back the sensory fiber of this ramus supplies the skin near the midline of back and the motor fiber of this dorsal ramus they innervate deep muscle of the trunk and which are responsible for the movement of vertebral column so the anterior ramus travels forward and it supplies the limb as well as the anterior trunk Uh, it's also important to remember that they are the majority of the anterior ramus which are combined uh, and they form the nerve plexus and why these nerve plexus are formed because from these nerve plexus major peripheral nerves are arising uh, like you will cover in upper limb radial nerve ulnar nerve median nerve etc another point to remember is these nerve plexus are not formed in thoracic region in thoracic uh, region the intercostal and the subcostal nerves are formed so these plexus are absent in the region of thorax now so how many nerve plexus are formed there are five in number and uh, please remember this they are formed by the anterior ami of spinal nerves and these plexus are cervical brachial lumbar sacral and the coccygeal uh, you will encounter the detail of all these in a head and neck region upper limb lower limb Uh, so for now just focused on this point that these are going to form by the ventral or the anterior ramus of spinal nerve so the ventral ramus from the c1 to c4 they are forming the cervical plexus and as the name indicate this plexus is formed in neck region the ventral ramus of c5 to d1 they are forming the brachial plexus and again as the name indicates brachium mean arm so they are forming in the arm region or the axilla Uh, ventral ramus of L1 to L5 they are forming lumbar plexus and the lumbar plexus is formed in abdomen and the lower limb region uh, ventral ramus of L4 to S4 they are forming sacral plexus uh, and similarly ventral ramus of S4 to S5 they are forming coccygeal plexus uh, the sacral and the coccygeal plexus they are present in pelvis perineum and the lower limb besides the dorsal and the ventral ramus that i have covered the spinal nerve is also uh, having the communicating ramus and these are smaller fibers and these are branching out from spinal nerve uh, we also name them as in white and the gray ramus communicants uh, so why we are naming them as a white and the gray ramus communicants it's uh, all because of myelination a uh, white ramus uh, appears white because they contain myelinated nerve fibers while the gray ramus appears gray because they are going to contain unmyelinated nerve fibers so the white ramus communicants exist only at the level of t1 to l2 uh, and they are responsible for carrying the preganglionic nerve fiber uh, while the gray ramus communicants exist at all level of spinal cord and they are responsible for carrying postganglionic nerve fiber Uh, so another question is uh, what's the function of these white and the gray ramus communicants as the name indicates these are communicating fibers so they communicate with sympathetic chain of ganglia uh, so they are playing a crucial role in autonomic nervous system that was all about spinal nerve anatomy uh, i hope when you will read this topic about spinal nerve it will make you happy not sad thanks for watching keep liking and subscribing this channel thank you so